Hey, what's going on, sports card fans? This is Ray from Philly here on this Wednesday night, September the 9th. Welcome to another episode of Sports Car Talk. Tonight, this is episode number 11, and we're really happy to have a great guest with us tonight. First, I want to introduce my co-host. This is Mike, this baseball card life that is joining us tonight, as usual. And Hello. we're also joined by a guest. Who are we? Right now, we have Victor Roman who is from All Time Greats blog. Victor, thanks for joining us tonight on the show. Thanks for having me, you guys. Honored to be here with you tonight. Well, we're looking forward to having you on tonight. We got a lot to cover here. Uh, first, we're gonna introduce Victor as to uh, what he's offering to the community, to the hobby world. Uh, Victor has a great website called All Time Greats blog. And it's a fantastic website that well, I'm just going to let Victor basically explain to you the whole history and the whole premise behind it. I, I pretty much myself and, and Mike were on this site a lot. It's a great uh, database information, great site to to look up any pretty much anything you want that you're looking for on the hobby. So, Victor, why don't you tell us a little bit how you came up with the idea and what what the what people can look for in the site? What do you offer on the site on All Time Greats blog? Yeah, Ray, thanks for giving me the opportunity to explain it. Uh, the website was inspired by my need to get back into the hobby. I, I exited the hobby in 2004, and I came back in 2014. Now, I had quite a bit of years of experience prior to 2004. I think I was a car dealer and a pretty serious collector. But when I came back to the hobby in 2014, I wanted to get up to snuff with things. And uh, prior to my my little um, absence there, I was, I've was i always been a rookie card collector, big time on rookie cards. But when I came back in 2014, I started to shop for rookie cards of current guys like uh, Javier Baez, uh, Nolan Arenado, them, them sort of guys. And as I was shopping for cards on eBay, I, I started to realize that there was everything. It seemed like everything was a rookie card. And there was just, I was so confused as to what was a prospect card and what was a rookie card. And, and it seemed like um, even the insert cards, my goodness, were being labeled with rookie, car, rookie cards. Mm -hmm. and just, um, yeah. I, that's where I, I really felt the need that, uh, that I needed to do my homework. And I really started to dig in to, to get caught up or get, you know, up to snuff with, with, with the hobby. And I ended up looking for um, resources with, you know, blow up forums and, and blogs and articles and videos. And I really started digging in and I, but I really couldn't find much, um, in what I was looking for. And then I was wanting to look for the certain Hall of Famers. And it seemed like I had to, I had to, if I wanted to know about their career, I had to jump on this website. If I wanted to know about their stats, I had to jump on this website. If I wanted to know about their rookie cards, I had to go over here or over here, or over here. And I'm trying to figure out this information that I need, but I need to go to four, five, six different websites. Mm -hmm. And I came across this one website called Old Cardboard. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I think so, yeah. A fan, yeah, it's a fantastic website. It's been around for a while. And they give uh, um, they deal with more pre-war cards. And they deal mm -hmm. with, um, they show a lot of pictures. And they give you a really <coughs> short little bio on, on the cards. And I thought to myself, want man, whoo. But, yeah, I'll show it for you. Is this it? Yeah, that that's it there. Yeah. And and I figured, man, wouldn't it be great to have a website that would feature Hall of Fame rookie cards? And here's my thing that really separates my website with all others. What I started to find out was as I was researching, I found a lot of articles like Top 10 most expensive rookie cards of so-and-so. Top three best. In, but what, what about the collector who can't afford his top 10 most expensive? Right. 
You know what I'm saying? What right. about the what about the collector that enjoys collecting all of their rookie cards? Mm-hmm. I want to see a checklist of that, and that, and there were few and far between. Right. So I said to myself, man, imagine if you will, we're going back to the twilight zone here. Imagine mm-hmm. if you will, a website that will offer you a, a short player bio on the history of that player but then give you a checklist of all of their official rookie cards and just showcase the card, the front and the back. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm finding a lot of websites that do just the front of the card. Well, Mm -hmm. I take a lot of gratification on looking at the back of the cards as well. I Mm -hmm. enjoy that. And so, and I'll give you photos front and back and I'll give you a small snippet of that card, any pertinent information that I feel collected to know, I, I share that. Mm-hmm. And you can see, we can take a look at a, an article yeah. on, on mine and we can really dissect it. Yeah, because I've, right. I've looked through it and it's really great. I mean, if you, you, you type in pretty much any player, say for example, Randy Johnson, and you'll give a whole detail of all of that player's rookie cards. Yep. With a little article right. for each card, so like if people aren't sure, hey, what? H- how many rookie cards does this guy have, or what rookie cards does right. he have? Yep. It's all in right. your website. It's all there. Yeah, there even even the yeah. There you go, Randy Johnson's. And so there, I, I will start the 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 dissect. Uh, <clears throat> see that little snippet of each card. Mm-hmm. But I'm more. Of, I'm I'm really a rookie card purist. So if you scroll down a little bit on that article, Mike, you're going to see at the bottom, um, at the top, I'm giving you the official rookie cards. And mm-hmm. then towards the bottom, I'm going to give you a segment that's called cards that are often viewed as rookie cards. But oh, my God, that's are great. Not, you see? Yeah. And, and then I'm not just going to tell, uh, show it to you, but I'm also going to explain to you why these are not considered rookie cards. Right. And so we... And something else that I've started here recently is, Mike, if you want to go to uh, Nolan Ryan's article, because I want to show you guys a really cool feature that I've started doing. This is awesome. Yeah, if you look at Nolan Ryan, um, towards the bottom, you're going to see, I start with the official rookie card, Mm -hmm. but sometimes the cards like this are priced. So... On the bottom, I'm going to give you affordable alternatives. So I'm going to give you his second year or his third year. Right. So I'm going to give you options on on the on, on what to get. That's great. <clears throat> That's great because, like you said, especially with a lot of the modern players, where they have 10, 20, 30 rookie cards. You know, yeah. uh, I was doing the same thing like you were saying. I was going to five different web browsers. Were up looking for like. You know, what's his rookie car? How many rookie cars does he have? And it's all here for you. So, yeah, I highly recommend people yeah. check this out. This is great. And I also offer I also offer all four sports, Ray. I don't know if you do that. Um, Mike, if you can go to uh, basketball greats. Yep. Or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's go to um, current greats. Current greats are guys that are locked in for the Hall of Fame right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if you want to open up LeBron James, this article took me two months to put together. <laughs> and, and, yeah. And the reason why is because he has 63 official uh. cards. 63, but I took the time, the labor of love. I went ahead and did a snippet for each one, and I showcase a picture of each one. And I'm going to give you a list of the parallels for each one and really take the time to showcase all of his rookie cards for you. Right. Isn't this the one that went for like a million bucks? The yeah, auto? that one right there. Sure the exquisite. Right there. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of rookie cards, 63. That's 63 rookie 63. cards. That's a lot of rookie cards. And, and you cover all the sports, right, Victor? You covered football as well? Yeah. And, okay. I do football and ho- the four primary, baseball, mm-hmm. basketball, football, and hockey. But I also feature another segment that I think you guys will really enjoy. And if you go to the menu, Mike, and take a look at 
uh, should be great. These are guys that are, you know, Hall of Very Good guys, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Roger Clemens is a should be great, obviously. Yeah, Bonds, yeah. 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 A lot of Dale Murphy fans out there. I'm big on yeah, Tony I'm Oliva. Just... I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah. looking for his rookie card, yeah. too, right yeah. now. Steve Garvey, that's and his Garvey. rookie card. Yeah. Dick Allen. Dick Allen. Yes, sir. Yeah. I hope this be the Cobra in here. Well, this has turned out really well so far. Um, we also wanted to chat about the, the three articles that uh, you have on the rookie card. And recently on your YouTube channel, you started just talking about each one of these uh, articles. Do you want to uh, just talk about the first one, the history of the rookie card? When you, when you look at the, the, the blogging community, what a blog has is a series of articles, but then they, they have what's called a pillar post. Now, a pillar post is typically uh, a, a post or a series of posts that are going to be the meat and potatoes of your entire website. It's, it's kind of your, your philosophy, per se, on a, any one particular item. And I started this, uh, I wrote this three-part series a couple of years ago that entails the rookie card. And the first one is uh, the history of the rookie card. And what I feature there is I I ended up taking, and I created a timeline from, from what I call the rookie card boom that happened in 1981. Mm -hmm. And I covered all the, uh, all the episodes that we had with with rookie cards all the way to 2005. And in 2005, the hobby and the industry had, had just come to the point where they considered the rookie card to be broken. And there's articles on this on hobby publications and, and those who were around there at that, at that time, remember this very well. There was just so much confusion and frustration with the rookie card. That the, that the Major League Baseball Players Association had to step in to be order into the chaos because it was affecting uh, it was affecting a lot of things. And so once they stepped in, they kind of gave us some guidelines of what they expect because what was happening is the the because of the the, the spirit of competition that was around in the hobby back then, there was such a rush to get to the rookie cards that these manufacturers were chasing these these kids down. My goodness, when even when they were in high school, they weren't even graduated yet, and they're pursuing these kids to make rookie cards, you know, out of them. And so, this it just spiraled. It got really out of control by by the mid two thousands, and that's when the PA stepped in, and and there was a lot a lot of great um, things that happened from that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you touch base on the first episode on XRC, extended rookie card. When did that, are you aware, when did that start? Was that in 84 with when the Clement update rookie card or did did they officially didn't really start until 86? Was it 84 or 86 on the XRC? It's a question that I've been pursuing Dr. James Beckett on. Outside of a, a couple of emails. But I, I haven't gotten a response yet. Uh, but he would be the, <laughs> the, the guy to really uh, give us the details on the XRC. But from what I am studying and what my research is showing mm-hmm. and the experience that I have, because I was around, I was, you know, I was a teenager back at that time. Um, from what I remember, yeah, it was right around the XRC really started creating a lot of, a lot of, um, it started uh, stirring the pot with a lot of collectors. There was an uproar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because people didn't know, like, is, is it really like say for Clemens is he has a 84 Fleer update and then he has the 84 Fleer regular and that people no, would does, see. He doesn't the, have the, yeah, he didn't have the 84 Fleer. He ended up. I'm sorry. 85. 85 yeah. He had yeah. 85. He had his three regular base rookie cards of Donner's tops and Fleer and people like, where is that the rookie card? Or is it the Fleer update from the year before? And they would put that right. XRC 
right. which drove me right. nuts. I was like, what is it? Is that the rookie card or is it, well, RC is a Extended. rookie card. Yeah. And it was yeah. just drove people yeah. crazy. So I think you said in your article, they got rid of that right by 1988. Yeah, they did. They did. And then, uh, but it, they had to, because of the gimmicks and the shenanigans that manufacturers were playing, they had to right. direct this thing to, to bring clarity to certain steps later on in the early 2000s. Right. Yeah. It was just insane. Yeah. And uh, then you go, go into the nineties or the 92 Bowman set started then with, with the minor league draft picks. Uh, you know, the infamous players were in street clothes uh, in 92 yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and parallels yeah. came aboard in the nineties yeah. as well. But the, yeah, 92 had yeah. started with the nicer. minor league cards. That's my this favorite one nice. right there. Yes. Yeah. That's the one to have right there. <laughs> That's a sweet looking card, Mike. It yep. is. The 93. Right. I just brought that out because the 92 is is rookie, but I like the 93 better. So I just. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah. I want to say it, that. Yeah. 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 That does pants have to go on them. Sorry, Mariana. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. So. He's, he's looks like he's going sailing or something like that, but. Uh, yeah, and then you you touch on the base later on in the '90s, where the the parallels started coming in in the mid '90s. Uh, yeah, I yeah. mean the the ad inserts made mainly the hobby impact of the insert card uh, that yep. that started mm -hmm. going crazy by like the early '90s, '92 and '93. Um, yeah, more so, more specifically with uh, with the basketball side of things and Shaquille O'Neal. That man, I remember that uproar very very well. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that was uh, because Shaq was still under contract with Classic, uh, which was an unlicensed uh, card manufacturer. And right. man, did that just – a lot of the manufacturers, they put Shaq in their Series 2 product, which worked out. But uh, mm -hmm. some, some manufacturers put it in Series 1 with Redemptions, and that just didn't sit very well with collectors. And then when they got the cards back – uh, almost a year later, mm -hmm. they came numbered like an insert card. And, and there was right. a lot of collectors saying, hey, uh, again, rookie card purists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're saying, right, hey, like, I'm out of here. <laughs> that's exactly what yeah. you're saying. You're saying that, but are parallel and rookie players that are included in insert set considered rookie cards? Some collectors say no, others say yes. So, yeah. correct. It's yeah. a parallel. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's, and in your second really video, yeah, I was going to move it here. To the, in your second video, the Ten Commandments of the Rookie card, you even mentioned like a redemption card, even if yeah. it's his rookie year, is right. not a rookie card. <laughs> and one of your, I think it's one of the last, the last ones. Let me show everybody yeah. the article here. No, no, no. And that was based, um, the Ten Commandments of the Rookie card are based, the first five were what the MLBPA gave us, okay? And then the second five were basically hobby standards that electors, this is what we followed. This is what the standards that we had for a rookie card back then. And, mm -hmm. and so, and after 2005, when the rookie card went under reform, I, re, uh, I recall, you know, the, the industry, the collectors, the MLBPA, card dealers, <laughs> collectors, everybody came and, and, and had their say at the table to, to really define what is a rookie card and what isn't. Right. And, and the, sec the second five um, are actually what the rookie, what the hobby says, what, right. rookie, what are rookie cards. Right. Yeah. yeah um, six through ten. Yeah. Yeah, we could go through these Ten Commandments if you choose, if you like. I mean, I think this is very informative, and uh, it's just just really well, good let's, information. Let's just, yeah, let's 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 stick with um, let's stick with pushing the video more because I need to. I, I want sure. to update this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, it's just okay. the the rookie cars is just such a. Uh, a phenomenon in the past oh god since 1984 with the mattingly rookie and everything else like it's just yep. come a long way uh and mm -hmm. i mean before that people really weren't chasing the rookie cards uh from what so many research that i've looked at uh, it was mainly just getting the all-stars of whoever 
that people wanted to get. Like if it's pick any year, 73, 74, you know, when we were kids opening up packs, we weren't like, Oh, did you get so-and-so rookie? You know, now a I think in that, it, it's, Oh, it's a whole different yeah. ball game now. Now it's like starting in 1984 when the Manningly 84 Donners came out, you know, um, uh, well, 80, 81, that was game right there. When Donner and Fleer game came into picture, yeah. yeah. That was a total game yeah, changer. Yeah, Absolutely, but pre-81, sure. so pre-81, a lot of collectors were just getting sets or right. team sets or just getting their favorite right. players. Right. And just kind of kind of doing exactly. that for collecting. Exactly. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that is, so you have another so the, the two episodes that you've done so far uh, were the history of the rookie card episode two. Yep. You've done the ten commandments of the rookie card. Uh, yep. So you're going to be doing a third part coming up soon. Uh, did you want to like not give away too much information? But yeah, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to give it all away. You don't want to give it away. No, at least maybe the title. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, the title of the next video is going to be called uh, The Future of the Beloved Rookie Card. And it's really where, where I really get into, I guess, communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll give you a little snippet of what, what I'm going to be talking <laughs> about. And, and, uh, but it's basically communication is the key. Now, my right. thing is, they're your cards. You can call your sports cards whatever you want to call them. You have right. the right to do so. If you right. want to call an eighth year Nolan Ryan a rookie card, hey, guess what? That's <laughs> what it is. Because it's your card. Right. But my what I'm the, the proposition that I'm wanting to give to my listeners and, and, and to your listeners is when it comes to the sale, the selling and trading of cards. We all need to be speaking the same language, right? That for the standard. sake of the, yep. yeah, for the sake of the hobby, for the sake of the future, for the sake of new collectors coming in, right. there has to be, you know, let's call it what it is. And mm -hmm. I also enjoy very much what Com C has done, and I'm giving too much away here, but yeah. I'll, I'll get into the details later. Yeah, I really, I really appreciate what Com C has done because they've taken. And they split things up to try to get proper communication. They've kind of given us a template to follow. And they've split it up as um, rookie year, rookie mm -hmm. card. And I, I want to say it's pre-rookie. And, and they have a red box for the rookie yep. cards. They have a yellow box if it's rookie year. And I believe a green box for pre-rookie. And so if we can follow that template, I think it would benefit the hobby as a whole right. and give collectors a better chance at, at getting what they want. I'll right. tell you, guys, I ended up last year, and, and now I have studied this topic extensively, right? <laughs> now, here's what happened in the last year. I decided... Um, I live in the Chicago Line region. And I decided I want Frank Thomas's rookie card registry. So I okay. started the set, and on on my PA set registry, I started the set, and I went shopping. Right, real excited, and I'm, right. I'm starting to scroll through Frank Thomas rookie cards, and I bought the 1990 score traded along with some other ones. Mm, and yep. when I got it back, and I went to go get my 1990 score traded. And I wanted to go put it into the set registry. It, it wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. That's well, happened to me a couple times, yeah. Yeah. It turned out the 1994 traded is not an official rookie card. Therefore, it's not in the Frank Thomas rookie card registry. <sighs> because he has a 1990 score. Yes. So the score traded... It can't be a rookie card because he already has a rookie card. Right. Because And so, yeah, it's, it's things like that that just, uh -huh. it, it just blew my mind, you know. Well, that, that happened to me with the Albert Pujols, okay? Um, it, he has three 2001 Topps cards. They all look exactly the same. They have the green border. Uh, they have the 2001 uh, Topps traded, 2001 Topps chrome traded, and 2001 Topps chrome. 
So I had bought the Topps Chrome Traded, and I was going to, like you, I was going to start the Albert Pujols <laughs> rookie card. And I tried to put the Topps Chrome Traded in. It's not there. I call up nope. PSA. They said, we don't. Re it's not recognized as a rookie card. His Topps Traded right. is, but not, and the Topps Chrome, but not Topps Chrome there Traded. Is. I was like, why? They said, well, Love we it. go by what Beckett says, and if they don't have an RC next to it, it's done. I was like, oh, my God. I was yeah. like, that's why, you know, it's so difficult today, and you shed a lot of light on it with your site. Uh, so thank you for that. So it, it, it gives a lot of clarity to, like, just tell people, here, you want to know, it's right here. There's there's no confusion about it. It's black and white. It's it's Right. You pretty yeah. much tell it like it is. Like this is the rookie card. If you're looking for the true rookie card, like uh, Bowman right now does these first cards, and you know, so it's not like it doesn't have the RC on it, but it'll say first card or something like that. And I'm like, first Bowman, yeah, first Bowman card. I'm like, so they're calling that, I guess, a pre-rookie card. So I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I said I can't keep up with this now anymore. It's just there's too much to try and uh, figure out. So. Right. Um, I don't know. Do do you have any advice to people as to like what should they do? Should if they want to just go for the rookie card, just not even bother, I guess, with the pre rookie cards and all that, and just go for what like RC and just stick with that because that might be the most simplistic way to go about it for me anyway. It, it, I, that's how I well, approach it, it. You know, it it depends what the collector wants. I don't. I, don't, I, I, I see. You know, I see value in, in uh, prospect cards. I really enjoy the autograph cards and prospects because right. they're very clean, beautiful autographs when you're talking prospect cards. Once they get into the major and they are signing for the first six months, you see that autograph just get sloppier and sloppier as the years go on. That's as why the years really go like on. The prospect. And prospect autos are really nice. But what right. I will say is, um, you know, when we mention the word true, I, I think it's, it, it falls more in line with pure. I think that's mm -hmm. a better word for it. And what we're having is, is what I feel is a rookie card that is watered down. It's watered down because there's confusion. There's confusion because there's no clarity. And mm -hmm. so if there's no clarity, what we do is we just say, oh, they're all rookie cards. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, it's the, yeah. the, that's the easy road. That is not the real road. The, there is a, a rookie card, in my opinion, and I mentioned this at the end of my second video, the Ten Commandments, is the, the rookie card is sacred. And, and, and it's, it's, it's nostalgic, and it's the backbone of, of the hobby. And it should be respected and protected by us. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and for it to be... Um, watered down to the extent of we're just confused about it. To me, it's not good. So I like to look for the pure rookie cards. We have to try to get rid of the the the, the confusion, the nonsense that that's there, right. and really do our homework. I'll tell you, if we're, we're talking here, just doing a little bit of homework, knowing what the rules are, and and. You know, base your question off of that. Right. And, and plus the fact, uh, Victor, like when, if even if it is just a true RC on, on certain years, people don't know which one to get. I mean, even if, if there's, say, 10 rookie cards of that player, like, well, which is which is the most valuable one? And why is that one the most valuable one? And, uh, as, you know, recently it's been Tops Update because of the trail, you know, flagship. Now people right. are using that. This new word that I just discovered a year ago, flagship. And people said, well, it's going to be Topps Update. It, for a while, it was Topps Chrome, and then it was Topps Update. And it changes from year to year. And I'm just like, you know, right. a lot of people have asked me that question, too. Like, they say, all right, we know that this has an RC on it, but the player has 10 RCs. Which one is the one to get? And people can't really afford to buy all 10 of them. So they're trying to pick out maybe the two or three best ones. And it's hard to give an answer to say, I don't know, you know. Uh, that, that's why Ray... That's why Ray, it's so important for us to know the history. Right. That I proposed in my first video. Uh, it's so important to know the history, and it's so important to know the rules 
Right. Uh, and I hate to say I hate to say that word rules because that rubs people the wrong way. Sure. Uh, right. But let, let's call it boundaries. We we got to right. know what the boundaries of the rookie card is, and we know the history of what the rookie card is. Well, now when we're faced with a with a with a question today, we have some form of reference where we can mm -hmm. make an educated decision. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's so true. Uh, I think you have to start from the beginning to get where you're at right now to try and understand it. Um, but it's uh, it's still a, cha a task each year for a lot of people to try and figure out what to go for on these players. But nonetheless, it's still I, you know a fun thing. I don't, I don't believe it's I don't believe it's the people. I, I, I think it's really Ray. It's it's nobody's teaching it. So and this yeah. is why I always implore. Um, uh, the seasoned collectors. There's a lot of mm -hmm. seasoned collectors out there, and I want to encourage your listeners and, and perhaps those who have been in this for a while mm -hmm. become teachers. And, and I know I'm not saying you, you know do YouTube channel or do. I'm talking about the collectors that are next to you. Right. Teach them the right way, and 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 don't be afraid to 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 voice that to the to the younger generation because they need to know mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. i know we got to get going here in a few minutes but i had a a couple things i wanted to ask both of you guys about okay and just i thought a, a few of like kind of the bad things about this whole rookie card craze though i want to say i do collect rookie cards and i like them this is just <laughs> you know like the five percent that just kind of of the rookie card that kind of bothers me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And at times it feels like the rookie cards gotten like too big in the hobby mm -hmm. where people will just like buy a factory set and take out the four good rookie cards and literally like throw away the other 700. Like they don't matter at all. Mm -hmm. And it's like 90% of the, the cards produced are tossed or put in a box and you never look at them again. Right. And it's just like really like devalue so much of the hobby and there's there's so many great cards other than the rookie cards and mm -hmm. i know there are awesome great rookie cards like i got these a few few weeks ago i mean these are really fun right <coughs> right sure right these are really hot fun fun cards that came out i showed this on instagram you know because it's been 25 mm -hmm. years since one. since cal right. came out right like this is a really nice nice card to have graded mm -hmm. or not like it's right just, was a lot about the league and that's a little frustration there and then i opened like almost 50 bucks and packs of these mm -hmm. and these uh 2020 top series two and i love opening packs i'm not saying don't do that but i got two Luis robert cards which is great right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. both of them have scratches mm -hmm. all all down mm -hmm. them so it's like and it's it happens a lot with the newer cards with me there's like line right. scratches on them and it's and I, you know, just quality control hasn't been right. been great with tops the last few years, so that's been, you know, really frustrating because mm -hmm. the the main, you know, what's worth anything are the rookie cards and the parallels and the autographs. The hits. So that's yeah, and the hits, and it's like five percent of stuff is what people want, and mm -hmm. ninety five percent isn't, right. and so. Yeah, collect yeah. rookie cards, buy what you want, but it just seems like that's all people are doing, mm -hmm. and the set collectors are like a thing of the past, and you know, so, yeah, so tell, me where I'm, tell me where I'm yeah. wrong here if I'm just nah. if yeah, I'm yeah. talking too <laughs> negative about really. this. You're not you're not wrong at all. Uh, I mean, it, there's that old adage that I think a lot of us on YouTube have been saying, you know, collect which, what you love, which really is a true statement. Uh, like when you open up the pack and you got the two Lewis Robert cards and then you saw the scratches on it. Now, a lot of people that are chasing the rookie cards are now all of a sudden think that the rest of that pack is worthless. And that's a shame because, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, hobby and collecting the hobby. I mean, the rookie card is, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit it. Uh, I do collect the rookie cards, but I do collect a lot of other things too, and I do do set building as well. But uh, people shouldn't just uh, also just chase the rookie cards, I guess. Uh, collect whatever you feel like you want to collect and open the packs and, and enjoy it with your son or your child or whatever. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think it, it has gotten um, a little crazy the past couple decades, really, 
with the rookie car yeah. because of the value. But um, yeah, uh, it's a good point to give to people out there to say, you know, don't forget there's other cards in there. I mean, second year, third year, but it doesn't matter what year really. I mean, if you if you're a fan of a player, if you're a fan of a, a certain set, and you just want to collect that whole set, you know, go for it. So yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, it can get it can get uh, it, it water down everything else and make just think that people just have to chase the autographs or the serial number cards or the rookie cards. Even though I'm yeah. I'm a I'm a total person freak of rookie cards here. I'm I'm the first one to say I I chase them myself, but and, and Victor yeah. is too. But uh, yeah, you know it, it. There's nothing wrong with anything else that people collect out there. Uh, collect what you love Absolutely. and. Uh, Enjoy yeah, the hobby I think, for what it is. I, I think, Mike, um, what you're seeing is what's on the front lines. If you're if you're if you're specifically looking at YouTube, it's going to be all about the rookie card, and yeah. that's all we're pumping and dumping is on the rookie cards. But I, I think if you really um, do an overall universal uh, view of it. Um, the rookie card is probably going to be the majority, but there's also going to be a lot of heavy collectors, uh, you know, player collectors, team collectors, set collectors. Set collectors, uh, yeah. There's, there's, there's quite a bit of those, too. They're just not as perhaps vocal on YouTube. Yeah, I don't see um, them as much. Yeah. No, not yeah. as much, but they're there. I believe they're there, at least in my circle around town here. Yeah. So The, the, the topic of the rookie card is always going to be um, – a topic of a lot of questions that people are always seeming to trying to get the answers for. And that's what we try and shed a little bit of light on today, you know, to try and explain to the people, you know, about the history and, and your episode. And I, I urge people to go back to your episode number one of this three part series that you're doing on the rookie card to check out the history of the rookie card. And, you know, you'll learn something definitely for sure. Um, and the Ten Commandments of the Rookie Card, and I'm looking forward to when you're going to do episode number three. So I think there's always a lot of questions with people in the Rookie Cards. There's been for a lot of years uh, what to get, but you know, what's the most valuable, and is this a rookie? Is that a rookie? There's a, there's a lot, and definitely your your three part episode and your site is going to um, uh, shed a lot really of light on us. that, yeah. and will guide people the right way, and. Um, and give people a lot of information. It might not answer all their questions, but at least it's going to, you know, put them a little bit more clarity because yeah. I've always had questions. When I, I mean, I collected from 1979 to uh, 2010 or 12, and I took like a six year break and I got back into it around 15. And a lot changed just in those five, six years that I was gone. I was like, oh my God. And uh, it yeah. took me a while to try and figure out what was going on. What was going on? But the rookie yeah. card is a really interesting topic uh, to try yeah, and to figure it out. So I think you you definitely helped out a lot of people with that. I hope so, Ray. That was the goal. And I know um, the you know you you mentioned that there's always questions, and and mm -hmm. I believe that to be so true for this one thing is that manufacturers are always coming out with with some type of i i, don't, I hate to call them gimmicks but that's because they're in the business of selling and there's marketing sure. techniques and all this other thing and i and i get that i'm not bad mouthing them but there is always some gimmick that causes just confusion and it's like oh my goodness what they did with the uh 2018 tops acuna with the short yeah. print back down with the Bad complete set, Denny Tops update. Oh my, yeah. that's an episode <laughs> in and of itself. Yes. Just yep. that was one card. Um, but it, it's those gimmicks that, that's how come it's so important for us to know. Because knowledge is power when it comes to this sort of thing. And when we can figure it out, and because when we can work our way through the muddied waters, then mm -hmm. we, we're we 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 have what it takes to to make a, a good purchase right the purchase so that true. we want to make well well right. said definitely well i mean this was a 
great episode. I think, you, you know, you, Mike, did you have anything else you wanted to uh, go through or would ask Victor? No, I don't so, have, an, I don't have any other questions, Ray. So okay. if you want to close yeah. this out, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, just to let people know when you're going to be releasing episode number three, do you have, do you have a date in, in mind when you think you're going to be doing that? Yeah, it's going to be uh, the weekend of the 19th. It'll be okay. out. Um, September 19th, 2020. All right. That sounds good yeah. to me. Looking forward to that. So, Victor, we really appreciate you coming on and, and shedding some light on the rookie card. And you're, and don't forget, to you know, everyone needs to check out uh, alltimegreats.blog uh, for all your rookie card information. And check out the three-part, yep. uh, well, the two-part series right now that's on his YouTube channel on the history of the rookie yep. card and the Ten Commandments. And look for episode number three coming out soon. So, Victor, yep. I really appreciate you coming on. Mike, once again, great job, buddy. Uh, so that oh, ends sports card, sports card Talk episode number 11. And we'll see you guys real soon. So thank you very much for tuning in. And make sure, like I yep. always say, have fun with it. Uh -huh.